Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. We are still uh, looking at Colossians together. Hope you have your Bibles with you. Let's open with a prayer. Father, give us your grace today as we look at your word. Help us to understand uh, your will and your word for us. Help us to go along with it and to submit to what you have for us. I believe that if we do, uh, we will find your grace and glorious things on the other side. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so yesterday I was, I was kind of bumbling through a very controversial uh, subject nowadays, and that is the idea of submission and headship uh, in the family. Um, and so let me go back to Colossians chapter 3, uh, verses 18 and 21. Um, Paul says, Wives, submit to your husbands. Submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Um, I wanted to go back and touch base real quick with that because um, we, I, I compared it to, to the curse, which is uh, God said to, to Eve when we, Adam and Eve fell in the garden. He says that uh, you will have a desire for your husband. He will rule over you. And again, that was, that was part of the curse. It wasn't the good, a good thing that people will point to that verse and say, it is the husband's right to rule over us. It, it, rule over is not the terminology God looks for in a relationship with, between a husband and wife. The terminology is wife submit. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the verb for the woman, not the verb for the man. I don't know if I can explain that to you. The verb for the woman is submit. The, the, the verb for the man under the curse is, is uh, rule, uh, dominate. And so the, the cur when the man starts to rule and dominate, that's when the curse is reflected. That's when the bad stuff happens. That's when God doesn't want that to happen. And so you have a woman who is doing her verb while the man is doing his verb. And that's a, that's ter that's a terrible consequence because she is submitting unto his domineering. And that is, that is a picture that too, many, too often we see and we look at that and say, that can't be what God wanted. And it is actually not what God wanted because God said, when he said rule over, he said, that's going to happen. I don't want it to happen. It shouldn't happen. It should never happen, but it will happen because of the curse of the fall. But the verb still belongs to the woman, and hopefully the verb that belongs to the man is applied instead of rule. He, uses, he looks at the verb in Colossians, which is love. Not rule, but love. And so that's a, that's a different picture when you have someone submitting to someone who loves them. That's a very big difference because Jesus loved us. We submit to Jesus, but he, and he loved us so much he died for our sins on the cross. And that's exactly the, the comparison that Paul makes in Ephesians. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And so that's the picture of a relationship. And, and the more you meditate on that, I pray that God see, shows us that and that we start to uh, express this, this pattern that God has for us. Uh, just to emphasize, uh, Paul says it in this verse about that whole ruling thing. He says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Do not do, not go, do, not do the tendency, which is the curse, the rule over the harshness kind of a thing. Don't do that, but love them. So that's the, that's the verb. Our verb, husband's verb is love. Wife, your verb is, is sub submit. Now, the, the other thing that, you know, kind of becomes an argument for this pattern that Paul sets up um, you know, people, because people look at that and say, well, that's a cultural thing. That's, that's 2,000 years old. It's not anymore because, you know, we, no one has to submit anybody to anybody. But if women stop having to submit, do, do husbands have to stop loving and all that kind of stuff? That's one of the questions that you have. And then if women don't have to submit and husbands don't have to love, then the next question comes up. Children, do children not have to obey? Because that's the next thing. Children, obey your parents and everything for, for this place is the Lord. So you got submit, love, and obey. For the, for the, in, in, in the progression. And, and so, again, we, we want to pick and choose what, you know, if, if this is truly inspir inspired by the Holy Spirit, and this is another accusation that Paul gets, that he wasn't really being inspired by the Holy Spirit. He wasn't Jesus or anything like that. He's just kind of doing his, you know, his male chauvinist stuff. That he's dumping that on the pages. It's, first of all, they're reading Paul wrong when they say that because he's not saying... Uh, you know, everything I've just explained to you, there's there's little difference between submission and loving. There's really little difference in, in that. Um, but second of all, they're they're uh, they're they're walking dangerous ground because they're they're attributing they're saying that that only parts of the New Testament are inspired by the Holy Spirit. So Paul was being chauvinistic when he wrote Colossians three eighteen to twenty one, 
But there are other passages where Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And then we become uh, the pickers and choosers of what verses of the Scripture that we say, that's, that's good, but this, no, nah, I don't know, I don't like that passage of Scripture. And people are doing that all over the place. It's, I, I preached a sermon once called the partial view, uh, partial theory of inspiration, which is basically that the scriptural, scripture is partially inspired. It's not fully inspired. It's just there are these pieces of, of scripture, these chunks of scripture that are just human blah 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 cultural stuff, um, you know. And so you know they just kind of we kind of, we we get to become the the people who dominate. We are the we are the authorities over the scripture. The scripture is not over us anymore. We're over scripture because we tell the scriptures what it should say because we can pick and choose which parts from God and that kind of thing. That's a very dangerous ground to walk on. And so as people look at this and they say, well, it's okay for husbands to love. It's okay for children to obey, but it's not okay for wives to submit. And so, so that becomes um, problematic in just your interpretive uh, uh, process. So Paul says uh, in verse uh, 20, he says, Children, obey your parents and everything, for this is uh, this pleases the Lord. And again, uh, the children might be thinking, well, doggone, you know, what, you know we, I've, got to, I've got to do this obey thing. Um, God, I think, has put parents in the lives of children, and I think this is pretty common sense, uh, to, to guide them for the first few years of life to, so that they will know what's right and what's wrong in the world. That's pretty common. That, that, that's the way that the, 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 the Christian family was designed to become. And that the hope is that they, that the father and the mother are actually Christian and they are actually following the commands and precepts of, of God and they are relating that to their children. If they're bad examples, then that's, that's a whole bad thing. That's when, that's when you get the true definition of dysfunction, when, when sin comes into father and mother relationships and children relationships and it just becomes a mess. Um, but in, in the pattern that God sets for us, the ideal is that you have two godly parents and a child that is called to obey that parent um, because in the end uh, they're there to release that child into the world uh, with wisdom and understanding that will help that child to grow and be blessed uh, in, that, in that child's life. And along with that comes this, this admission of fathers not to embitter the children and, and that's, that becomes um, a thing where you know you get these overbearing, I mean, once again you, get, you bring this ruling over overbearing and, and and i think we all have tendencies i look at my my raising my five children i think there were times I, there were times when i was overbearing and i was too much of a disciplinarian I, I said no too many times going back if i would have if i could go back i would go back and say yes a lot more than i did a lot of the a lot of the times i said no to my children they were based they were, they were based on fears of what might happen if i did say yes to some of the things that they were wanting um, so I said no far too often. I would, I, if I could go back, I would say um, yes much, much, much more often. But those are the pa so that's just some ideas from the patterns uh, that we have in, in uh, the Word of God for the family. And I hope that as, and I know that they're general and they're broad strokes uh, over the family, but I still believe that if we follow these and if we memorize these and kind of put them as patterns in our life, our families will truly be blessed. Let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us. And as we continue to let your word have its way in our hearts, as we submit ourselves to you and to your authority and your will and your way, I pray that you bless our families and you make us uh, grow closer and closer and closer to you, to Jesus, your son, by the power of your Holy Spirit. And this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Chapel Hill. We'll see you very soon.